Gary Hart's ill-fated run for president is among the great political implosions of our time. The Colorado senator was considered a lot for the 1988 Democratic nomination, that is, until reports of an extramarital affair drove him from the race. But now, a new book is taking issue with the newspaper that broke the story, calling it a turning point in political journalism. Gary Hart seemed to have it all. Smart, popular, handsome, and the political momentum heading into the 1988 presidential election. But then, the monkey business. After the Miami Herald confirmed rumors of an affair with former model Donna Rice, Hart was finished, but not before taking a few parting shots. We're all going to have to seriously question the system for selecting our national leaders. That reduces the press of this nation to hunters and presidential candidates to being hunted. How prophetic, says Matt Bai in his new book, All the Truth is Out. The former New York Times reporter says Gary Hart was a turning point when political journalism fell into the gutter. You see a shift in the ethos of political journalism from the illumination of ideas and the ability to communicate them to how do we find out the lie? You're lying about something. You're a hypocrite. How do we find out what it is? And Bai singles out the Miami Herald and its stake out of Hart for getting us there. The Miami Herald sending reporters to hide outside the house, to disguise themselves, to catch him in the act, that had not been done. But hold on, says Tom Fiedler, one of the original reporters on the Herald's Hart takedown. In a lengthy rebuttal to buy, Fiedler says Hart publicly denied rumors of an affair and dared reporters to prove otherwise. We felt that it's important that voters be able to consider when they're looking at a person's uh, fitness for office, they should be able to take into account what his character included, and it included lying about, as it happened, infidelity. And that's probably better than letting a candidate make a monkey out of us. So was Gary Hart's downfall a turning point in political journalism? Here to respond is Tom Fiedler, now with Boston University, along with Adam Riley of WGBH News, Callie Crossley, also of WGBH News, and Dan Kennedy of Northeastern University. Of course, I'm going to turn this mm. over to you, Tom, first. But <laughs> there's been so much that's happened in the wake of that. That might have been the first like that. But so many other examples. But the, we talk about the Jesse Jackson and um, John Edwards. But you don't really feel it was gotcha journalism. Well, I, it was perhaps gotcha in the sense that um, by by following this particular allegation and um, and then reporting the allegation, it, it clearly resulted in the uh, in the decision by Senator Hart to drop out of the race. By the way, I, I always find it uh, rather um, uh, odd when people say that the Miami Herald. Uh, forced Gary Hart out of the race. W what? It's kind of the old line from Harry Truman. Uh, we we just uh, I just told the truth, and uh, I, and they they thought it was hell. And we just reported what we thought would be important for voters to consider, which was the situation that uh, Senator Hart was involved in. And ultimately, it was the public reaction that uh, Gary Hart recognized would make it uh, infeasible for him to go forward in the campaign. Might not be now. We'll look at what happened mm -hmm. with Bill Clinton. One big problem I have with the, the map by argument, I, you know, I read the piece when it was uh, out in the New York Times Magazine, went back and read it again today. I have not yet read his book. But he seems to me to kind of want to have it both ways on the reporting that you guys did. On the one hand, he says that there were all these powerful currents, dark currents in American culture mm -hmm. pushing you in the direction of doing the sort of reporting you did, which makes it sound like you had no choice but to cover the story <laughs> yeah. the way you did. But then at the same time, he wants to say, this one moment changed everything. And the implication, I think, pretty strongly is, well, maybe if you'd exercised restraint, we would be in a better place right now. And I don't think you can, can have it both ways. And I do think he tries to. So I find his argument a little muddled in that regard. I also am interested in the fact that he doesn't, he seems nostalgic for a day when politicians could sort of, you know, consort with women who weren't their wives and there were no consequences. But he doesn't seem to grapple with the fact that there were big power imbalances involved when this would happen and no one cared about it. For example, Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. And I happen to think that's problematic and it's appropriate to mm -hmm. call public officials on it. Well, I also think that, um, you know, he, he, he does sort of admit that when social media and all these other things came along, that obviously there was going to be more to know about and more ways to know about these candidates and more hunger to know about these candidates. He sort of says that on the side, yeah, yeah, that probably was going to come, but 
you people pushed it <laughs> in the Miami Herald. I think what was going to happen, and it was going to happen whether it was with Gary Hart or anybody else, is that we as consumers no longer just wanted to have sort of the front image mm -hmm. of a candidate. We're asking questions. Um, we live whole lives and we want to know from them how, what's your life like and what does that mean for me in terms of how I view your values. So I think he's a little bit mm -hmm. off on pinning it on the one moment in time in this way. If anything he could say, uh, you know, this was an example of many things to come, but I, I just yeah. don't, I don't see it as the one moment. Yeah, I mean, I agree with all of that. Yeah. I would add to that, different politicians have different kinds of vulnerabilities. And Gary Hart was already vulnerable because uh, he was thought by his critics to be inauthentic. He had changed his name. He had lied about his age. Um, he was thought to be not very substantive. Walter Mondale had picked him apart just a few years earlier with where's the beef. And so, you know, when you've got him publicly denying that he had had an affair, uh, and then the Miami Herald and, and others pursuing that, uh, I think he was very vulnerable in a way that some other candidates mm. might not have been. I mean, Bill Clinton essentially admitted to having, you know, having caused pain in his marriage and people after forgave him. After lying. After lying. But people forgave him and moved on because I think that there was a different type mm -hmm. of public perception of Clinton that didn't exist with Hart. Well, that, that's, mm -hmm. to, you know, to Matt Bayh's bigger point about gotcha journalism, I mean, it certainly had no chilling effect when you think of Jesse right. Jackson, mm -hmm. John <laughs> Edwards, Bill Bob Clinton. Doe. But, well, well, they were, you know, they mm -hmm. had, they didn't pursue it. Yeah. They just, they exactly. had information. I mean, the Washington Post had confirmed yeah. it and then pursue it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, I think there is, uh, maybe this is the hubris of people who are in positions of power that uh, the rules don't quite apply to me is I think uh, what we too often see. But you know, the one piece I would uh, go back to is uh, what did change and what was changing by the time Gary Hart came up is that uh, the press took it more on uh, as its proper role to vet uh, to vet the candidates who were running in the primaries. 20 years ago, the party leaders did all that, and the press just sort of dutifully sat back and waited until the campaign was underway and really acted more in the role of scribes than, uh, than, uh, than, than vetting the, uh, the, the candidates themselves. But that all changed, ironically, with George McGovern. And when a young Gary Hart was George McGovern's aide on that committee that reformed the process. And and the press was pulled into the role of uh, assessing the candidate in every dimension. And it was increasingly important that people know not just where a candidate stood on issues, because issues change, but who they were. And you use the word authenticity. Yeah. W what is authentic about the candidate? That's when you got into this territory about is he lying, uh, is he reckless? And I think that was really the issue with Gary Hart. No offense to Matt Bayh. I felt a little bit of generational naivety poking through there. Great writer he is, though.